Welcome to the Unity Terrain Basics series. I am finally back with another episode. In this video, we will cover how to plant trees onto our terrain. Let's begin. The first method to plant trees onto our terrain is to import external assets. In the Unity Asset Store, there are numerous high-quality tree assets available, and many of them are free to use. They offer high-quality textures and meshes, and many of them are often optimized for performance. I love using these assets for projects that don't require extremely fancy scenery. I have already added a tree asset. Let's see how we can integrate it with the terrain system. First, we select a terrain tile. From the inspector, we can see there is a list of trees, which is currently empty since we haven't imported any trees to this tile. We click on the Edit Trees button and hit Add Tree. A new window will show up asking us to provide a tree prefab. I will now select a random tree asset. Let's choose this. For the bend factor, I will leave it as zero. Let's hit the Add button. Now this tree has been successfully added to this tile. Similar to painting textures, we use a brush to paint trees. We can adjust the brush size and the tree density. I recommend leaving the tree density around 10 and 20. This way we won't be adding too many trees at a time. We simply click on the terrain and the trees will pop up randomly within the area of the brush. When we paint the trees to the neighboring terrains, they will be automatically imported to the new tile. If we click on this tile here, we can see that it has no trees defined. Let's go back to the original tile and try to paint across the border. When we look at this terrain again, the tree will be automatically added. To remove trees, we simply hold down the shift key while clicking on the terrain. The trees within the brush area will be erased. Notice that when we erase all the trees within the tile, it will not remove the tree asset. We can remove this asset again by clicking the Edit Trees button and select Remove Tree. If this type of tree has already been painted on this tile and we remove it from the tile, all the tree instances will be removed at once. Let's add back the tree assets and explore the other options. The tree height allows us to adjust how high the trees will be. We can make them extremely tall or extremely small. This option simply scales the instances. We can also specify a range by enabling the random option. So the trees will be painted at random heights. The lock width to height option, when disabled, we can specify the width of the trees. We can make the trees as wide as possible, or we can make them as thin as a chopstick. Let's 
let's set these values back to the normal range. The terrain system comes with a useful mass place trees feature. We first select a tile and select the desired tree asset. Hit this button and a new window will show up. We get to specify how many trees to plant in total. Let's specify 2000 here. We can also choose whether or not to keep the existing trees that we've already planted. Once we're good with these options, we hit the place button and the system will automatically populate this terrain tile with the selected tree type. The other method of creating trees will be to build the meshes by ourselves. In Unity, there is a useful tool which can be found in Game Object, 3D Object, Tree. This is a tree builder tool integrated into the Unity engine. Let's see how to use it. This tool will automatically create a tree prefab in the project directory. From the inspector, we can see this object comes with a tree component. This tool creates a procedural tree mesh, which we can instantiate later on. In the inspector, we can see that it has a root node and a branch. Here we can adjust the distribution settings. The seed is used to control the randomness. As we drag it, the tree mesh will be updated in real time. We can control how many branches to create by using the frequency option. But I don't recommend setting it too high because it will cause memory issues. I will leave it at 1 for the roots branch. We can control the angle or the tilting of this branch by using the growth angle option. We also get to fine-tune a lot of the options for the shape of this branch, such as the length, the thickness of the branch, the smoothing, as well as the crinkliness of this branch. Using the Seek Sun option, the tree will tilt towards the sun. We can also adjust the chance for this branch to break and where it will break. Let's now apply a material to this branch. To do this, we simply adjust the branch material. I've already imported a few textures and materials, so let's apply them directly. If we see an error message here, we just simply hit apply. This fixes the shader issues. And now we can see this branch is being textured. Additionally, we can manually adjust each node on this branch. We can adjust the position, the rotation, and we can adjust them freehand. To create a new branch, we simply use this button here called Add Branch Group. It creates a new branch from the roots. We can further add more branches to this particular branch. Increasing the frequency the growth angle, as well as the length.
well, it looks like cactus somehow. Now we have completed branches, let's see how we can add leaves. To add leaves, we first have to select the desired branch. I will choose the top one, which are these horizontal branches. We simply hit the add leaf group button. And we can see there are a few meshes added to the branches. These are how the leaves will be presented. First, increase the frequency and let's randomize the seed. It doesn't look like a tree right now because the leaves are all white. The next step is to apply a material. Again, hitting the apply button to fix the shaders. And immediately, it looks more like a tree. We can control how the leaves are presented. There are numerous modes, including plain, cross, tri-cross, billboard, and mesh. I usually just select plain. Furthermore, we can adjust the size of these leaves. The perpendicular and horizontal alignment simply controls how uniform the rotation will be. I reckon setting both of them to zero gives the most natural look of the leaves. Again, you may find two these values based on your needs. Next, we're going to look at how to add our newly designed tree to our terrains. First, select a terrain and go to the Paint Trees tab. It's the old business, just click on the Add Tree button and drag our newly created tree prefab and add it to this tile. And now we can just paint on to the tile. Some of you may encounter a problem that the leaves become disappeared. It is because inside a prefab, some of these nodes are being hidden. For example, if I hide this tree node here, then the leaves will be gone. So to fix this issue, we have to go inside a prefab and make changes here. It is also a good practice to make changes directly inside the prefab editor. Next, we're going to explore a new component called the wind zone. We have to create a new 3D object called wind zone here. The wind zone creates wind effects that makes the trees look more realistic. The trees will be affected by the wind and begin wobbling and shaking. For the wind zone, we can set the mode to be either directional or spherical. Spherical allows us to control the sphere of influence, but I usually just leave it as directional. Let's run the game. And as we can see, the trees are wobbling. They look very dynamic and realistic. By tuning these values here, we can control how strong the winds are the tree branches are being stretched out due to the wind. As well as the turbulence and the pulses. It appears for performance considerations, only trees that are close enough to the camera will be affected by the wind.
This is how we can add trees and animate them realistically on our terrains. In the next video, we will try to add more rocks and details onto our terrains. I'm Yellow Flicker, and I will see you in the next video. Stay tuned.